Hello everyone, this is Taki from BigHeadTalker.com and welcome to BHT Studios. I'm here to do an unboxing video, but this is gonna be special. I'm gonna unbox the brand new Fujifilm XF200 F2. And this is how big the box is right here. And uh, the box is so big, I can't do it my typical kind of looking down on the box because it's just way too big and there's too much, the focus is gonna move around too much. So the best way for me to control the focus depth is kind of doing it this way. You can see it's pretty much, it's gonna take up the entire screen. And uh, that's kind of the limits of my studio at this time. So please put up with this unboxing. It gives you guys an idea of when you buy a 200 millimeter uh, XF200 F2, you have an idea of what you're gonna get. And this is what you're gonna first get, is a box this big, a plain cardboard box like this, and then and then we'll start digging our way into the inside. So let's let's begin the unboxing now. All right, we can't start an unboxing until we take out a knife, and here is my Spiderco Polywog knife. And uh, let's let's begin this sort of already unboxed but re-unboxing unboxing of the XF two hundred F two. So let us see. So I, have, I haven't opened this. I have no idea what the packaging is supposed to look like, but so far it's a pretty plain, it's a pretty pretty darn plain box. It's, it's not fancy, but maybe that's, it's plain on purpose because you don't want it to be looking flashy that, you know, like, look at me. This is a really expensive lens in here. Let's, oh, so there's a box within a box. So that's kind of cool. So this outer box is just sort of the general box. And then you have a plastic bag, maybe to control humidity and stuff, things of that nature. And you remove the plastic bag. Okay, I'm still struggling with an unboxing, guys. So please put up with me and put up with this. It's still, it's still a plain cardboard box, but at least there's more text to it here, right? Here's, here's the text here for the, um, the uh, XF200 F2 R L M O I S W R. So the R has to do with the aperture. It has an aperture ring on the lens. L M is the linear motor, optically image stabilized, and it's weather resistant. And it should come with the uh, 1.4 times teleconverter, which will help the lens maintain that F2 as well as maintain the fact that it is still W R. Right? Yes, repeated in the back. I was just basically reading what's on the back here. So this is what this lens looks like, and it does have the editor's sample, but I was told that this was brand new and untouched, but opened to make sure that everything is legit before they send it out to reviewers like myself. So, so far, this is what it looks like on the inside. Pretty, pretty plain. It has a couple of styrofoam packs on either end here, and it looks like it comes inside its own little kind of a, kind of a, cl not cloth, what do you call it? Like um, like sort of a duffel kind of a bag, but you, you'll, you'll see in a second. I'll pull this whole thing out. So let's, let's pull it straight out like this, and I don't think there's gonna be anything else, because there's no other way to take this out, I think. This is just the only way. So I'm taking the, the thing out like this. There's still more things in the box. But, uh, so this is what it looks like as is now. And here the ends, the, the, the styrofoam ends to protect the lens. So it's kind of floating. It's kind of floating inside. And uh, in here is, you get your bag, little baggie of accessories. It has its own dedicated lens. Well, it has a warranty card in here. And then it has its own dedicated owner's manual for the uh, this huge lens, which is good. Because there are some things in here that you have to program, which uh, you might forget when you're out in the field. So maybe it's good that you have it. And then you have a, like a lens pouch, I guess. I don't know. This is probably for the teleconverter. Yeah, because the, you know, the lens won't fit in something like this. My hand can barely fit inside here. So clearly this is for the teleconverter. And this looks like a strap of some sort. Yes, this is a, a strap either for the lens itself, and it actually kind of reminds me of like the strap for the GFX 50S. That's what it reminds me of. And, uh, but it's nice, 
It's a really well made, stitched on both sides, has Fujifilm in grey instead of some loud colour. And a uh, nice kind of a soft, kind of a foamy inside. So let's look at that. And here we go. Hopefully the last plastic we'll see. And this is, this is what the, this is what the, this is what it looks like. This is, sorry for it not looking sexy. Look at that. I, I might put some inserts later so that you can sort of get a better view. But for now, this is what it looks like. And it looks like on the top, you could put your business card in here and say, this is my lens, don't touch it. Leave it alone when you're at a sporting event. And um, this is sort of, you can kind of top carry like this, like that. And this is kind of that uh, sort of, uh, you know, kind of like what a backpack would be made out of, right? Kodura, is that what it's called? Whatever this material is. Um, I am used to, um, so uh, I used to own a 300 f2.8 back in the film days. I used to shoot for uh, the Canadian Football League, the CFL. I was actually the team photographer for the BC Lions. And so I shot for the team and I had a 300 2.8 and all the other guys around me had big lenses, 300, 400, 28, 600 f4, 500 f4, whatever lenses uh, people needed to get the shot. And often the 300 2.8 would come in a metal box, which you would rarely bring it with you unless you needed like a step stool. So you could, they were so strong, those, those cases that you could step and stand on it for extra height. And this thing here, although it's light, it's probably something that I would carry with me everywhere. Uh, a case like this. Um, so I, I would have a bigger bag, like a big low pro or something like that, or a Temba or something like that, and put this inside. But, uh, you know, I, I'm used to the big metal cases that probably Canon and Nikon still have it that way. Um, very well padded on the top when you open it up. And on the top half here, it looks like there's an actual spot here. So right inside here, there's an actual spot where the teleconverter lives. Can you see that? That's where the teleconverter lives. So it's great that there's a dedicated spot. And this lens does come with the... Uh, 1.4 times teleconverter. So that's kind of what it looks like there. You can still keep this on it if you don't need it all the time. You lift it off and here we go. It's inside here and there's still one more piece of plastic it looks like here. And that's it. The case is empty. All right, so we'll put that down and we'll... Ah, it has that... No, actually, it doesn't smell very good. It has a new, it does have a new lens, but it's a very chemical kind of a smell. And here it is, the Fujinon Prime here. And they ha even have the, the little, uh, little dry packs in here to keep the humidity out. And of course, this hood is reversed like that so that it keeps it compact. And there's a, even a piece of tape on here to, I guess, just to make sure that it doesn't shift in in shipping here. But here, look how beautiful that, that script is. And it's not white, it's kind of a silver. The lens is kind of a silver color. So let's just unscrew this, which will then loosen this up. Now here is the lens itself. And here is the, the big hood. So when you look at this lens, and I'll just take the tape off here. Um, when you look at this lens, and you see it with the hood on like this, it looks really big, but really the lens is this, but because it's so telephoto, uh, the inside, so the outside is colored this silver, this silver paint, and what it does is um, it keeps, like these high-end lenses have the ED, the LD type, the low dispersion type glass, and it's very sensitive to heat. And if you're shooting outdoors all day in the, in the, in the, in the sun, or something like that. What happens is that it'll, if this lens was black, you heat up the, le the, the lens itself and you can get some shifting in the lens elements. You can actually expand. It actually affects the lens optically. So that's why um, Can I think Canon and Pentax were one of the first ones. The Pentax, uh, the high-end Pentax lenses, even in the film days, were silver coated. Canon w was white. And Nikon, for the longest time, would still keep it black. And Minolta, only they're like 600 F4, 300 2.8, 200 2.8. And those kind of big, large primes would be painted white as well to keep that, um, that heat low. But on the inside of the hood, it's this matte look here. It's matte to keep uh, reflection to a minimum. So if light comes in from the side, you don't want it bouncing in here and then creating weird flares inside the lens. And so um, should I put this on right now or should I? Um, the way it goes on is I think it's just kind of 
there you go. You just kind of, there's a little uh, ridge in here and you just tighten up and that's it. You can see the size of the uh, lens cap as well. It's, what, what size is this? It's 105. I think that means it's 105 millimeters. So that's, that's a very expensive, very expensive uh, filters if you wanted to buy a filter. And my 302.8 used to have drop-in filters in the back and I'm a little bit surprised and disappointed that this doesn't have drop-in filters in the back. It'd be nice to be able to drop in something in the back here, especially like a, a neutral density filter or a circular polarizer that you can just drop in. And here's the two strap lugs here that you would put this strap on here so that if you're walking around, you don't want the weight of the entire lens on, on the lens mount or on the camera body. You'd want it on the lens itself. So uh, that's why you would have uh, lens straps on here. And same thing here, if you want to mount this on a tripod, you mount the lens on the tripod and not the body because at this point the lens is heavier and bigger than the camera body itself. And so, so far, uh, if you look at it, it is big and it's heavy, but it is lighter than it looks, but it's still pretty darn heavy. I don't know the exact weight, I'll maybe put it down here, but uh, it's really hard to, even if I told you the weight, you don't really know not just the weight but the balance of it until you actually have the lens on hand. Uh, it's nice that it has a dedicated aperture ring. I'm used to having it a little bit further back into the body, but it is kind of further out. So let's, let's just mount it. I do have the new X-T3 with me and when I was in Toronto, just give me a second here. Here we go. So this, this is the XF, the X, the XF 200 F2 with the X-T3 on here. So you can see what I mean by the lens is, is tiny. I mean, the camera body is tiny compared to the size of the lens. And I had a chance to play with this in Toronto, shooting drag racing as well as uh, on the track. I actually didn't have a chance to use it on the track because I think everyone was trying to shoot sports cars, but I did get a chance to play with it just a little bit. And uh, at this point, you know what? I'm gonna just take this hood off because it's a little bit hard me to manipulate this camera here we go so it looks a little bit more manageable now uh, so a, a 200 f2 on APS-C works out to an equivalent of a 300 f2 but in terms of uh, equivalent uh, depth of field it's about a 300 2.8 but that's where the teleconverter comes into play so let's put the teleconverter on and this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky um, so I can see here that 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 this color converter, a lot of it goes into the lens, into the back of the lens here. And so let's just try to line this all up. Let's, I don't even know if I'm doing this correctly. I, I, I hope I am. Um, where's the, where's the, here we go. So looks like it lines up. It's kind of an odd lineup, but this little red, actually, I think that little orange tab has to do with the body. So line this up here. So now it's on. And it doesn't add much to its length or size or weight, but it does make this into like a 400 and something, 427 millimeter lens. So that, here we go. Look at that. So now we got a 400 and something, 427 millimeter equivalent or in APS-C, it makes the 200 into a 280 millimeter lens. So that's, that's that here. And then of course you have, because you're getting so much telephoto, you do have the ability to limit the range of the lens. You could see all the little gauges and such on the side here so that it's not, if, you're, if it's looking for focus and you know that everything you're shooting is at least 10, 15, what is the limit here? It starts at five meters. So, so full, in full it means it's, you're gonna get the full focal range from whatever the minimum is. This is probably at least a meter and a half or two meters right out to infinity or limit it to five meters and out. And that's typically how most people use it. And that's where you get the most um, effectiveness when you're shooting sports. So it's not hunting around too much. As well, you have the option of turning the image stabilization on or off. And I guess the reason for that is if you are on a tripod and you're doing something still, you should turn off the optical image stabilization. It can actually affect the image quality if you don't need it stabilized. And finally, it has a preset of autofocus lock or, or a regular autofocus or your preset feature on these 
four, uh, yeah, there's four buttons on here. So depending on which way the lens is orientated, you can just keep that button pressed here. So here's the aperture here. And I guess the reason why it's, it's kind of in the middle, now it, it makes sense to me. A lot of guys, so I'll show you, a lot of guys that will shoot with this lens by hand without using a tripod, what they would do is reverse the ring to move it up and out of the way. And it doesn't look like this ring is removable. So sometimes they would be. So the way you would naturally hold this lens is like this, okay? You'd hold like this. So you can, you know, you can have the aperture control over here as well as it's a great place to balance the lens. And if you need to get that preset button, it's right in the front here. Um, in terms of lens design, it's very complicated. I think it's like 19 elements in 14 groups, I should have double checked that, but it's very complicated. It's I have fun looking at the design, just see which ones are the low dispersion, the ED elements, which ones are a spherical, which focus group moves. And from what I remember reading, it's minimum focus group. So it focuses really quick and it focuses very accurately. And as well for image stabilization, it is going to be at about, um, the stabilization is going to be about five stops. So the autofocus is quick and the stabilization is scary considering I'm at I'm at 427 millimeter equivalent and so it's a it's a beast of a lens I mean check that out that's it I don't know really what more oh also you get the two uh, the you get the two filter threads filter threads you get the two threading you get the three eights so you can put this straight onto a tripod uh, body, a 3 8 thread, or the regular quarter 20, as well as the Arca Swiss, uh, the dovetail cells. You can just slip this right on without using any plates at all, which is fantastic if you have a strap system. So this is a premium lens that has a premium price and, um, you know, very well designed. Uh, Fujifilm, they make cine and broadcast lenses. So for them to make lenses of this size, uh, lens design is a very complicated art form as well as a craft. And I'll maybe link a video that Fujifilm made that shows the process of polishing as well as cooling the, the glass down. So it's not easy making lenses of this size. And so I applaud Fujifilm to get into these lenses. I think uh, they still need a 600 millimeter F4 equivalent. So for APS-C crop, there'll be a 400 F4. F2.8. They need to make a 400 F2.8 to create a 600 F4 and then sort of ones in between if they are serious about getting sports, wildlife uh, photographers into the Fujifilm ecosystem, which I think they are uh, by looking at this lens. And of course there is a two times teleconverter, so it'll make this into a 400 uh, millimeter lens and then converted. So I think they need a little bit faster glass. This is big, but there are guys that do demand the 600 F4 equivalent in full frame and it's a very small group of people that want lenses like that so I can see why it's not on Fujifilm's highest priority. This is probably the highest. A 302.8 full frame equivalent is kind of the standard with the teleconverters. It's kind of what the standard sports photographers want as well as an 80 to 200 equivalent which they do have with the 40 to 150. So this is pretty, this is it. This is pretty darn crazy this lens here and um, I'll try to find creative ways to shoot with it in my own style and we'll see oh and it has click stops you can feel it you can feel that can you hear that perfect so you don't need to guess when it's perfectly perpendicular or parallel see that you can hear the click so now i know this is straight up and down i don't need to guess if i'm gonna go sideways look at that it just clicks in this way and clicks in this way so that's that's really nice Again, 200 f2 with the 1.4 times teleconverter, which is included in this kit. So I'll uh, try my best to do something interesting with this lens. Uh, comment down below and tell me what you think I should try with this. Maybe vlogging, maybe not vlogging, but uh, street photography, I don't know. But let me know. And thanks again, Fujifilm, for sending this to me. And did I say that already? Maybe I did. Uh, that's it. Oh, and just to let you know, I'm shooting this video using the X-H1 and the 23 F2 because I wanted to really show you guys this uh, lens on the X-T3 because this is a great partnership between these two because it has a sport mode, it has high speed autofocus, it has great uh, tracking and it has um, it has all the features that will complement this lens and that's probably why Fujifilm had this lens with this body in Toronto. So I'm happy that I have it but now I gotta produce some pictures with it. So thanks for watching guys, we'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the, 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 
and happy shooting. Peace.